Thanks for tuning in to the third episode of the How to Win at Online Poker series. In this episode, we're going to talk about calculating pot odds, implied odds, and draw odds. Learning to calculate odds is important because it will easily allow you to figure out profitable situations. This breaks down to recognizing when it is okay to chase a draw and when you should be folding. Most players chase draws against all odds, banking on a feeling. What they don't realize is, even if they do hit their draw, they're going to lose money in the long run. What most people fail to realize is that while poker is very much a skill game, there's also a mathematical side to it as well. Once you master the math side, you're well on your way to becoming a winning poker player. The first element of being able to identify a profitable play is to be able to calculate pot odds. To do this, you need to calculate what odds you're getting based on their bet and pot size. To do this, you first determine the total amount of money in the pot with their bet. Then divide that amount by the amount you need to call. For example, if the bet is a dollar to you and there's already $4 in the pot, your pot odds are $1 into a pot of 5 or 5 to 1. This means you can profitably call with any draw where you are better than 20% to hit or 5 to 1. In this first example, your opponent bets $200 into a pot of 400. This makes the total pot size $600 with a bet of $200 to call. So you take the total pot size of $600 and divide it by the bet size of $200, which is 3 or 3 to 1 odds. In our second example, your opponent bets $100 into a pot of 400. This makes the total pot size $500 with a bet of 100 to call. Again, you want to take the pot size of $500 and divide it by the bet size of 100, which is 5 or 5 to 1 odds. As long as your odds of making the best hand are better than the pot odds that you're getting, it's the correct move to make the call. Calculating draw odds are the second part of the equation, and they're relatively simple to factor. To figure out draw odds, what you want to do is take the number of cards that you think will give you the best hand. These are known as your outs. On the flop, you'd take the number of outs you have and multiply them by 4. So if you had, for example, 12 outs, you'd have roughly a 48% chance of improving to the best hand, or roughly 2 to 1 odds. On the turn, you take the number of outs you have and multiply it by 2, since there's only one more card to come. So again, if you had 12 outs, you'd multiply that by 2, which would give you around 24% chance, or roughly 4 to 1 to call. Now these numbers are just an approximation and they are off within a few percentages, but this is the easiest way to calculate what your odds of hitting your hand are going to be. One last thing to keep in mind is that if you calculate your odds on the flop, this is based on you seeing both the turn and the river cards come. If you want to calculate your individual odds per street, you would just multiply the number of outs that you have by 2 as opposed to 4 on the flop. So in the first example, we're way behind in the hand, but we've got a lot of outs. Any heart, any king, or any eight will give us the best hand. In total, we've got 15 outs, since we don't count the king of hearts or the eight of hearts, since they've already been factored as an out. So we take the number of outs that we have, which is 15, and multiply that by 4, which gives us a 60% of making the best hand by the river. In our second example, we're behind in the hand again, but we do have some outs. Any heart or 10 will give us the best hand here, so in total we've got around 11 outs. So again, we want to take the number of outs we have, which is 11, and multiply that by 4, which gives us a 44% chance of making the best hand by the river. One last thing when calculating outs, you do want to take into consideration the cards that come on the turn and on the river. If you think that one of the cards that has come has improved your opponent's hand to become better than yours, then you do want to recalculate your odds accordingly. When you're calculating your outs, you do need to take into consideration cards that you think may improve your opponent's hand. For example, if you're drawing to a straight, but there's two suited cards on the board, and you think that they're drawing to a flush, then you need to remove two of your outs. This is because two of the outs that you have will actually give them a better hand. In this example, you're drawing to an open-ended straight draw, which gives you eight total outs, any eight or any king. However, in this hand, you can't count the king of spades or the eight of spades, as either of these cards would give your opponents a flush, and thus they would beat you. 
So here you would actually only have six outs as opposed to eight. The third and final part of the equation is implied odds. Now implied odds take pot odds a step further. Instead of merely calculating the odds for the bet in proportion to your outs, you need to calculate what you expect the pot to be by showdown. So for example, if you're facing a bet of $5 into a $15 pot, you are getting 4 to 1 odds. Now instead of just going with the normal 4 to 1 odds, if you think your opponent will bet more on the next street, then you will want to calculate what the pot will be based on those bets. So essentially if you're facing a bet of $10 into a $15 pot, but you think that by showdown the pot will be $50, then you would want to figure out your pot odds as if it was a $10 bet into a $50 pot. Factoring implied odds is especially useful if you're facing a pot with multiple players in it, as it allows you to take into consideration what they're going to be doing as well. One important thing to note is that you don't want to go overboard when calculating your implied odds, as they are based completely on your opponent's tendencies. If you're up against a relatively passive player, for example, who you know won't be betting on future shoots, then you want to make sure that you adjust for that. So in this example, we raise from the button with 9-8 suited and get two callers. Small blind leads out with a pot size bet, and the big blind folds, which brings it back to us. This makes the pot $1,200 with a $600 bet to call. Now, normally you wouldn't be able to make this call since you're getting 2 to 1 pot odds versus a 3 to 1 chance of hitting your hand. However, if you think that your opponent is aggressive enough that they will continue betting on the turn and the river, then you want to consider what the pot will be based on those bets. Taking this into consideration, we can assume that our opponent will be making another bet on the turn. The pot is now 1,800 chips if we call, which means even if they only bet half the pot on the turn, it will now be 2,700 chips. Based on this, we're actually calling 600 into what we think will be at least the 2,700 chip pot, effectively giving us almost 5 to 1 odds, which now makes our call on the flop profitable. However, you do need to consider the texture of the board and whether you think they will bet if a scare card comes. This is why you need to carefully consider your opponent's tendencies when calculating your implied odds. By using your knowledge of odds, you can not only identify profitable plays, but you can also outthink your opponents based on their betting tendencies. This will give you the tools you need to dominate the tables. As usual, thanks for watching the video, hope you liked it, and don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. And check out legdonkey.com, link below, for more poker strategy tips and news.